Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to game two between Braveheart and Vichy Gaming. This is for the Star Ladder I League Invitational Season 3 Chinese qualifiers, and we are currently in the lower bracket. So that means if Braveheart loses this game, they are out of the tournament. Vichy Gaming, if they win this one, they could advance uh, to the next round opponent in the lower bracket as well. First draft, we got uh, Venomancer from Braveheart taking it away from Vichy Gaming, but they are not phased. Going right back for a Witch Doctor and a Spirit Breaker. I am Luminous. I'm going to be joined by my uh, trusted co-caster, Tsunami. What do you uh, make of this draft so far? Well, Vichy played it, you know, pretty quiet for their first two picks as well. So I'm not going to be like, oh, Vichy, come on. Where, where's, where's the joke picks? Because I'm sure they'll pick something out. They feel that Braveheart might be a team that they can experiment with, I guess. Because... I mean, that, that that was not like an elimination game, but this is an elimination series, so sure. you can't really get away with too much. It's a minor. It's like, there's some points on the line. Every single tournament from here on out could determine if you go to TI or not. And, you know, in like eight months or so, we're going to look back and we're going to be like, oh, this like Vichy Gaming Squad where they were like 20 points away from qualifying to TI. I wonder why they didn't get it. And then you'll trace it back and be like, oh, trace it they back. picked offlane Wyvern in one game, but... Follow the paper you know, trail. Uh, yeah, you got it. Yeah, you, people are gonna go detective mode. You just wait and see. They're gonna be like podcasts galore in like the month and a half before TI, trying to figure out how teams could have made it to TI. I assure you. So correct me if I'm wrong, but the the tournaments further away from TI in terms of like time span are worth fewer points, right? They scrapped that idea. So oh, only the very very last major is worth bonus points. Every other tournament, every other minor is worth... Uh, let me look it up, actually, because I don't know what the discrepancy between minor and major points are, but hey, I know that make sense, the scaling though? thing changed. Because you could yep. have a team that, like, do really well for the first half of a year, and, like, let's say sneak into TI, but then the patch change, and then MUFC happens, you know? Remaining. I agree. That's uh, one, of the, one of the things we need to be aware of, but... Yeah, okay, so every single minor is worth 300 points, and every single major is worth 1,500 points. Holy but shit. But the very last major is 2,250 points. So it's like, the last major is... It takes five is, minors for a major. Yeah, the last one, major the last is like, like... two majors. Major and like two minors, right? Or three minors. Uh, major and three minors. Shit. That's, yeah. that's big. That's hype, yeah, right? Like, big. then we people do actually care about... Well, I mean, people already care about majors and stuff, but, like, now when, yeah, when there's the, some numbers the on the line. penultimate major, because yeah. then it'll be, like, uh, in theory, it'll be, like, two months of no Dota, because the last major is June 4th to June 10th. What is... Who is running the last major? Radiant they don't know. It's it pending it's still. Oh, it shit. pending. Dude, yeah. this is going to be some shady, like, oh, we got a bid for a major situation. No, here's what happens. At like, uh, like a month before, it says Valve, and it's, like, the pre-ternational or the, something. The Valve like, no, nah, they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. No, they're definitely not going to do that. There's no, as it is, Valve doesn't even want to run one event. They're not going to run two events. Five seconds remaining. Oh, it would be super hype if they go, like, the moon major, right? Like, fly people to the moon and oh, play man. one there easy that's a dream that's, that's maybe uh ti 2080 you think we could mm. we could have buildings on the moon by 2080 you think we'll have internet on the moon by 2080 i mean you don't need internet when everyone's there oh right? that's true play it on land yeah. that's right my boy, my boy Elon Musk is getting involved, though. That's the long game here. Open AI, that's just the beginning. The plan is for SpaceX and Dota to become merged as one. SpaceX? Is that what you said? Do you not know Dying. SpaceX? What is SpaceX? I know there's a draft going on, but SpaceX? this is way more interesting. SpaceX is Elon Musk's, like, he has, he has like, Should two major this? companies right now. Like, yeah, you should because it's Can you it's spell uh, it for it's me because I'm I'm space I'm... and then the letter X. That's it. Oh, I heard space sex. Yes, I, was I know. Like, that's this what you is heard. way different. Oh, is it not as interesting anymore? No, let's talk about let's sex. talk about the draft. Yeah, we got a Nature's Prophet and Puck. So Puck mid lane, Nature's Prophet off lane. Although we we seen some teams play MP like even in the safe lane position. So this this game probably not going to be the case though. Yeah, they could jungle it. Vichy Gaming are capable of anything. Sure. Yeah. No. 
You're, it's nah. probably gonna be. <laughs> nah. Nah. Although the fifth pick for Vici will determine it all because all so far, like you said, Puck and Nature's Prophet, they can go in any land. And uh, we'll see what they want to deal with on Team Braveheart because Braveheart have shown the Venocore and now they're showing an undying. Ooh. So that means Sanking. Word? Sanking the offlane. I really like, like this pick because if you look at Vichy Shraff, they have three extremely mobile heroes and they could have essentially plus two at almost every single fight, right? So you want to pick up cores that are either hard to kill or that could do a ton of AoE damage. And that's pretty much every one of these heroes on Team Braveheart. They are much stronger when they group up. And I think Team Braveheart needs to play this mid game pretty grouped up because Vichy is going to be this like Viper com coming in like from multiple angle, poking and prodding and looking for kills. I don't feel like Tombstone is going to be very useful to skin though, because Spearbreaker usually has nothing better to do after he charges in. He charges in, he goes on a target, and then he has tons of armor. So as soon as Undying puts up a Tombstone, you just spend your time killing it. I guess and the so. rest of your team follows up on your initiation. Spearbreaker doesn't attack that quickly, but I think Nature's Prophet lately has been buying drums first. So that is going to be a, a easy tombstone kill whenever MP pops the drums as well. Yeah, that's true. We'll see how much this MP feels like split pushing as well, because lately it seems like uh, the... Well, teams have their own style. I don't remember what Vici's style is. But I know during the EU qualifiers for TI, which I was casting, I saw like two very distinct types of Nature's Prophets. I know the Mouse Sports squad with Skylark, like their uh, Nature's Prophet was just constantly TPing to like look for ganks on the map or like push with the team. It was rarely by himself. But then other squads will just like have NP basically never be with the team. He doesn't build items like Mechanism. He just builds pure selfish and is just like Broodmother almost. Well, looking at the way that this lineup wants to play for Vichy, I think Young Eleven has to go for the first style that you mentioned, right? Because I, I think when you have cores like the Puck and the Monkey King, you're looking to fight and you have Spirit Breaker, so. It will surprise me greatly if uh, Young Eleven do take the a little bit more selfish approach. Yeah, I agree. And Monkey King, as we saw yesterday as a one position, um, didn't do that well. I believe it was CDC that was running it, and they got destroyed. Well, they ran it as a farmer, right? They, they were trying to put in power on him and trying to get into well, the late game. He's going to be a farmer here, too. It's Paparazzi Monkey King. Right, but I think the... I agree with that point. I just think that the rest of the draft will allow him to fight more. The rest of the draft is not saying, hey, Monkey King, you just go jungle, you know? He's going to join these fights yeah. with Primal Spring and, and you know, hit some kids. That's true. Alright, both teams teleporting out to drop some wards. Interestingly, neither support have popped the smoke. Which is uh, something that you <laughs> see pretty common. The other common thing has been aggressively... I, I, I always see the Radiant's small camp get warded way more frequently than the Dyer's small camp. And I wonder if there's like a justification for that. I mean, you, I feel like you do have to go deeper to block Radiant's... Uh, I mean, you, to block Dyer's small camp than you do Radiant's. But, I don't know. It, it just seems like... The games that I cast always has Radiant Small Camp being blocked. Yeah. 30 seconds to battle. I don't really have a good logical explanation because I think both lanes are, both camps are easily pullable. Yeah. So. Though so for Young Eleven, it makes sense not to block this camp. Only when he wants to block it, he'll block it, and he can do that with Trance. He doesn't need to perma block it with a ward. And these trants are going to be super irritating for Disruptor to deal with. Thankfully, the Veno wards are okay at dealing with trants, but still, Veno is going to need to get some points in it, otherwise then your trants are just going to farm the Veno wards. Uh-oh, there's a charge coming in hot here. Cask going to fly in. Tree's now in position Blocks. to get that block off like you mentioned, and that is going to be first blood. Question is, who's going to take it? Oh, oh miss uphill? Finra says, sure. I got Thank you. you. Yeah. I think he was gonna give it to his core, and then it's like, you know, destiny has it. The kill. All 
All right, two charge. He's out of mana. Time to pop that thirty. <laughs> Yeah, this is Spirit Breaker's job, this game. He doesn't need to park himself in any one lane. He can just kind of soak up experience whenever it seems convenient in one lane, and then if he finds a kill attempt, he'll be perfectly okay charging across the map for it. Alright. Chen has taken his first skill point. It's not Refraction, so Paparazzi says, okay, here's four hits, and uh, I'm gonna farm now. Good luck. <laughs> Charge. Oh, and a whack. 211 damage. Why Chen? Orb coming it's forward monkey king. for Lao A. Ori uh, taking a ton of right click there. So how do you feel about mid Monkey King versus the mid puck? Was it just because the TA was mid? Yeah, I mean, TA is considered as a puck counter, right? right. She essentially out damaged you. You can't really harass. TA has a uh, what you can call it refraction, and the way that I'm watching this is that it seems like Monkey King is very resistant to any kind of melee roaming harass, because he just harassed you right back, dude. No problem. Yeah. And he's got bonus range, so that like whenever you do that dance back and forth, more often than not, Monkey King will be able to stall you out. What a bounce! I can't believe it went to that undying. <laughs> There's balance strike available. Why Chen? Yeah, yeah, what? he has balance. What the? Use it. I think he's he knows that the refraction is coming up soon. But now he's hit him a couple times. That's a kill. Oh, okay. Well, kind of messed it up. Pops a fairy fire. Thanks to the minus 16 strength. He has fairy fire. And yeah, doing a lot of work. And that's gonna be a charge. I think that's gonna be B heart. Losing yet another kill. Unless he ends on the low ground. Dude, do you think he planned that shit? No. Do you think that was I like think so. Chinese calculus? Maybe. I mean, it would be pretty clever. I don't think he would have died anyway, unless he got like a uh, super lucky 17% afterwards. Maybe, dude. Dude, he's, he's a freaking undying. He's a tanky dude. dude. He has five, under, uh, five armor underneath the tower. 17% prime, dude. That's true. HMX. Gonna get charged. Self cancelled. Not gonna go through the trees. Are they playing this qualifier on LAN? Uh, I don't think so. Why? Because now Young Eleven gets glimpsed back. Ooh, he's dead. Yeah, he is. Trees on HMX. Not really seeing how these uh, fights are starting with. Has he been, like, too aggressive? Or what's the deal there? Yeah, well, he he was waiting for a charge from Spirit Breaker to come in. And so he was trying to soften up Venno. And then he was just like, wait a second, I'm losing, like, all of my HP right now. Because... Nature's Prophet, on like a lot of heroes in the offlane, is not a poor man's shield builder. And that's like a big part of the reason why so many offlaners feel confident being like, ah, creep wave? I don't care about a creep wave. But you, you kind of need to worry. I think softing it up for a charge is maybe not the best game plan. Can they just always glimpse away the charge guy? Yeah, but I guess they just need the impact of the charge and then the damage from the first like inherent greater bash, and then they're like, ah, oh, Nature's Prophet can finish it off from here. All right. Charge. As now they charge. Again. Eleven runs in and oh there is no glimpse here, so tries to put down the field to actually get the kill on all eleven, but that means HMX. There are a lot of creeps here. Yeah, they yeah. are gonna surround him. Tower is not gonna be helping out. Oh, that's a two-man Gale tower. Maybe we'll help out here. Move? Lanham taking the tower hits a little bit. Now focusing up, charge. Or would you say the impact of the charge doing a lot of work, Lanham? The impact. Yeah. Gonna get denied here. Pretty nicely done, but Finra, no one denying him, so. Has to fight his way out. Oh, that was a nice deny. Yeah, I didn't even realize. I, I guess he. I forgot he got the Venomous Gale off. But oh. now Young Eleven might get glimpsed. Oh, he's dead. Two points. He's actually dead. Where's the oh. glimpse? There TP out. I'm not gonna Sprout TP and the Decay. Botlin. There's a 1v1 of epic proportions going on here. Bonk. And he should survive for this. Nice. So... Hold that thought here. HMX mid ganking mid. Uh, he has to just fight his way out of this. There's no way he can run. And he did. So before this, I think Vichy was winning pretty much... Well, not all three lanes, but two out of three lanes. But that was a great rotation from B-Heart. 
And I think the game is uh, back even as I pull a Light of Heaven. <laughs> it's kind of even, but if you look at net worth, right now the top four net worth is all owned by Radiant Heroes, and these are all heroes that will continue to scale exceptionally well. Nature's Prophet scales very well, Monkey King obviously farms very quickly. It's usually Spirit Breaker that will be the slowest, and oh, oh. Man, this is... I, do I need to start playing Monkey King against TA mid? You this do. is looking at... Yeah. I don't, oh, Young Eleven gets a kill on Sand King. Love I mean, him. as a melee hero, you have a range advantage over TA. You could harass... That's true. And, uh... It doesn't matter that he has refraction, because you just keep hitting that shield to get your charges anyways, and then you just... That's true. Give him your Damn. team. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna have to consider that. You just have to be really careful, because I think Paparazzi has been aggressively trading into the creep wave and into the shield. And he's gotten close to dying a couple of times. Yeah, but the idea is that he's trying to get that fourth hit of Jingu so that he can just lifesteal back all that harass that he took. As he hides the tree. Okay. Quietly, waiting. Charge coming through here. Watch He's him. gonna hit this disruptor on the way. Uh, Primal Spring jumping oh. in right now. Defensive glimpses. Nope, they're gonna all TP in. There's a glimpse coming back, but the, oh my god, the huge balance strike. A76 gives them a two man decay, but. Prophet says thank you. I'm uh, back in my lane. Monkey King didn't even really receive that much help in this lane either. Like, sometimes I would be like, well, the only reason he won is because Spirit Breaker was here. The Spirit Breaker was there at level 1, did one charge, and that was it. The rest of it has been all Monkey King. A Witch Doctor was there for like a minute, I think. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, walks out of the shield, glimpse right back into it. Tower gets a one pot shot. Four men surround here. Gonna get the kill. Ori in position for a coil, but... We'll need to back it up. Yeah, Ori and the rest of the VG Gaming squad took down that bot tier 1, so... Oh, top lane. Lanham, did he just 1v1 yep. of Venomancer? Solo kill, support, 5 position. That's How disrespect. The hell did... He's got a Max Maledict, dude. Big dick Lanham, yeah, but... putting his dick <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but Maledict needs damage originally. It can't just... It's not like a DOT by itself. I mean, it is, but it's like a tiny DOT by itself. You need damage on top I of think it. he might have cast it him twice, like bounce back with the, like the neutral creeps or something like that. Alright. Uh, Big Maledict Lanham. Monkey King, 24 denies on the mid lane against the Templar Assassin. I think that's the most impressive part. Because normally Templar yeah. just wins the CS department. And she doesn't even have any stacks either. No. The ancients are like looking weird, so I think someone tried to stack but failed it. And Which... so she doesn't have a great recovery oh, plan. This one. A support yeah, probably like, ran in one... and got rooted. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I think they did get rooted. Yeah, yeah. This prowler is missing mana, so clearly someone tried to step a little too close. And they got one stack on this top ancient now, but it's just one stack. All right, early item-wise, we got a face, soul ring puck, as per usual now in China Dota. Young Eleven did go for the drums first. Where's and... the Orb of Venom, though? Uh, where is the Orb of Venom? You know, his team has already two Orb of Venom, so I don't know. Getting a third one makes too much sense. The the the, the Orb of Venom is from the the charging guy. Ooh, Young Eleven hiding behind this tree, and now the charge. All right, Fenrir. Wrath of Nature, is it gonna bounce? Oh, not gonna bounce enough, and here comes Lao A. Alright. Meanwhile, mid he teleports lane. right to the mid lane. And the Big Dick Lanham with the Maledict. Is it gonna be enough? Oh, dude, he can move him out with Sprout. Oh, well. Or you can just kill him. I think if you cast Sprout in such a way that it, like, shoves TA, she'll lose her meld. Really? Yeah, because it's based off of movement. Oh. Oh, look at the death for immediately gets cancelled here by a well placed ultimate. They're still gonna get the kill though. Here comes the charge trying to save Lanham. Nice glimpse back, but it doesn't matter because Monkey King is in the middle of everything. Monkey King has the magic wand. Could Primal Spring right now. Oh, trying to eat the Oh, nice try. Not gonna get it. 
He misses TA ports back. And now Trap gets exploded on uh, Paparazzi. Taking quite a bit of damage. The charge coming back through the casket. Bouncing on two heroes. Paparazzi's gonna fight this. He has this jump. Ooh. Well, I thought he was gonna hit both, but... That ain't fishing. Paparazzi has not been landing these balance strikes very well. I'm just gonna go out and say it. You know? he's, like, that one in the mid lane, like, he completely... Oh my god, he's going Good to fate, live. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, these balance strike are... The girth is really thin. Um, it is. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy to land, but, like, he's getting too greedy with them. He's trying to go for multi-hero balance strikes, and... I, like, just to go for the one hit. It's it's cool. Yeah. You always feel like you're playing Shaker, or want to feel like you're playing Shaker, yeah, but you're not. exactly. Yeah. Alright. Oh, man. Sand King. Allow A. How's he gonna get out of this one? I mean, he could Burrow Strike. There you go. He hit that one. He did hit that one. They have a glimpse? Comes him right back. Ooh, even drops the ult. Just straight up TP out. Finra says, bruh, you don't have your stun anymore. Coil is gonna get used. Uh, oh, that was miscommunication. Yep. That was massive miscommunication. So the reason I said all, are these guys playing on land is because like I almost feel as if each of them has like 80 or like no more than 80 like 200 ping or something. It's like that was like a 200 ping play right there. Okay. Oh. But, Perfect, but then I looked in the console and they all have like single digit pings. So I don't really know. Yeah, most of the teams in China are located in Shanghai. So even if they play online, it's you know oh, maybe it's like right next to the 10 server. minutes. Okay, yeah. so. Uh, uh, you know, next to each other. Glimpse back, Y Chen. Think Fenrir will go down. On the shrine. Oh, I don't care about that shrine when you have Wukong command. Silence comes in. This is a two man. And Y Chen is stuck there pretty good. Doesn't have a blink to get out. Oh, but the charge oh. through bounces her Yo. out. He can pop that shrine. And now he's. Okay. They somehow see him this time around. Hit him. Hit him. How did they saw me, dude? I, I don't know, actually. Century Maybe here. he was dusted. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Alright. Well, I know you thought the last game was a raffle stomp, but, uh... <laughs> it was a raffle stomp because the heroes weren't even, like, meta. This time, like, Puck, Nature's Prophet, Monkey King, these are, these are good heroes. Spearbreaker's a good hero. These are all good heroes. And they're still, like, just face rolling right now. I know earlier in the draft you said that uh, Game 1's hero was somewhat Mimi. And I'm gonna ask you, like, a relatively serious question, right? Like, do you think we have even meme heroes anymore? Like, I guess apart from techies? No, okay, so that's a legitimate question. There are not meme heroes, but there are meme roles. Like, core Wyvern. I mean, it might be it's... meme now, but give it a month, you know? Maybe, but... There, there's still like, there's a reason why these things aren't popular, and they're either like a very, very specific situation in which it works, or you want to catch the enemy off guard, and they're like, they've never dealt with this strategy before, we've played it before, and it works in this specific comp, but also it's just mainly unfamiliarity, and so that's what I consider to be like a meme pick, is if it's like off the wall, it's still viable. Like, I, the Wyvern did not throw the game by any means. It was dealing damage, and then Spearbreaker gets pushed back. Mm, this should be a kill. Tombstone gonna get dropped down. Very tanky. Charge out! See ya! Oh. Alright. Now that's Mimi. That's just rude. Yeah. Do you think they felt the impact Ori of that didn't charge? Even help. Ori was just farming bot the entire time. He's like, now nah, you got this. Yeah. Do you need my dream coil? No, nah, I'm good. The Ori did the standard core player. It's like, oh, you did. I'm gonna I'm <laughs> hit some creeps. <laughs> Is Fenrir gonna die to these uh, zombies? No, 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 he's, he's fine. Now he's gonna charge right back. Going to die. You missed me? I'm back! Boom. He found something else, so it's just creep. Dude, that was like a three screens away. Yeah. I How's know. that work? I think it's an AoE, but I thought you needed vision. Yeah, though, I so thought you. I don't know. Well, I guess they have vision from the sword? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a witch doctor was walking by and he had vision of the camp. 
Well, you know, I had high hopes for Team Braveheart when they definitely gave uh, IGV a really good two games. No, yeah, it was a good series. They now, it looked even both series. This is not it. Feels bad. It's okay. They got their chance. We had briefly touched on the topic of what it takes for a tier two game, a tier two team to break out of China, and it does not seem easy. And we can see here why it's not easy. In addition to just not being invited to many things, the teams that you're going up against are very good. So, you know, you take this as a lesson of experience. You're like, sometimes you get offline wyverned. Too many gatekeepers, man. Too many gatekeepers, and they're going to be more and more in theory as this tournament season moves on. Because a lot of people are like, okay, this is really going to help out, like, scenes like South America is now, Dream Coil, on the Disruptor. Alright, solo kill. The port's oh, going to continue. Oh. Got that range. Okay. Hit that too. There we go. He's going to rip it. Oh! Oh, the fake out. You think he fake out or he got fogged? Either, I think he got fogged. <laughs> anyway, so uh, a lot of people were like, well, this new upcoming circuit is really going to help out South American regions, North American regions, teams that usually don't get qualifiers. But there are so many, like you said, gatekeepers in China that I think there's going to be a lot of Chinese teams that have like an even number of points moving forward. And in TI8, I wouldn't be surprised if a large portion of like the, the I think like the top four slots will be like, maybe five slots will be evenly spread out. But I wouldn't be surprised if the bottom half of the invites are like very Chinese heavy. Okay. Because the other thing to consider is that Chinese teams have a lot more money. Even though Braveheart is just like an open qualifier team, maybe not Braveheart specifically, but like a lot of like Ehome Keen or all these academy teams and stuff like that, they still have the resources of their organization, like Vici Gaming or whatever, and there well, are thousands of teams. You can make the argument that the resources are not being used well. Perhaps, but... Because when, when EG goes to a tournament, their players are well taken care of, they have multiple coaches. When China goes to a foreign tournament, they can even... Like, they, they rely on Jack to get food, you know? Like, this is... This is not really how <laughs> it should be done. But they have the money, and so if you have some South American major, then a lot of South American teams don't have the money to, like, easily get out to a Chinese major, so, like, why even bother... Don't they just fly you there? Spend your time qualifying. What? Don't they just fly you there? Yeah, but I'm saying it's much easier to justify qualifying for something that's in your region, I think, okay. than qualifying for stuff that's in other regions. Because so we're you... seeing conflicts. Yesterday, IG took like freaking 90 minutes to come to their matches. We have an attempt, another strike. That is a dead end. the bashes. I guess what you're saying is like the Chinese teams as a whole, they're more internationally minded. The infrastructure is there, so that exactly. every every tournament they see one as yeah, I'm gonna qualify to this. Whereas some of the, I guess the lesser established regions needs to pick and choose based on location and time and. Although I think it's becoming yeah. less and less of that case though. With you know most of these tournaments providing more price support and travel and accommodation support. Yeah, that's true. At least that's the idea. Hopefully that does come to the case because like Valve has forked over a lot of prize money, but no one really knows if the infrastructure money is going to come with that. And so like maybe a lot of teams had to break the bank to hit a minor qualification. Like Star Ladder is a like, established organization. Oh, that's now Dangerous Prophet, he's gonna get out. Yep. They're just lacking damage at this point to get kills. Oh, are they gonna get the stun? Yeah, Dream yep. Coil. Goodbye. That's disruptor. one kill. Finmer charging for another. Nature's Prophet says, I'm back. Burrow okay. Strike. Oh, they got vision. No fogging this one. There you go. I guess he did cancel it then. Because that looked pretty fogged. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, so, like, Star Ladder is an established organization. ESL Hamburg, that's an established organization, but like, sometimes for the other organizations, you know, I'm sure Valve vetted them, but... Oh, watch him. He's gonna get out. Regeneration. 
But you need to hope that the resources are going to go like equally to the prize money and to make sure that you run a clean tournament. I'm trying to see Open. if there's a something that Braveheart could do to win a team fight. It really will take Vichy like overcommit into a five man something, five man yeah static storm epicenter. Here's the thing: like even if they get clumped up five man ultimate, like all of these are level one ults because Braveheart is so under level. So yeah, I don't know. Except for Veno. Yeah. There's a Veno in this game. Yeah. Word on the street is he's been trying to farm up. He's got a four staff and a Midas. I mean, this that's is not the Venno that we saw in game one. Right, that's the difference, right? When Paparazzi was playing Venno, you knew there was a Venno in the game because he was blinking into four, dropping ults. Or, I guess the better move to describe how effective he was in that game was he was always. Remember, he was like in this spot? Remember that? Yes, and he was I solo do. sieging a tier two building, took four to kill him, and they all almost all died. Like, the, the impact of that Venno was insane, whereas this Venno is just like... I think, starting today when we saw the Venno being picked, you're like, oh, I don't like really... You don't really like Venno. And this is the reason why you don't like it. It's just very low impact, right? Exactly. You... Whenever there's like a concerted effort to... Like, every single, every single outer tower is gone. Except for... Yeah, every single outer tower is gone. And it's been gone for like, help, charge. Yeah, Atlanta just like getting ganked by three, four heroes survives it because he's got a big dig. He might actually die to Veno. Veno really wants him dead, but Lanham's got magic wand charge. He's got fairy fire. He's got the voodoo restoration. Nope. Oh, feels bad, man. That's just that. That come on, come on. Yo, that's a move where you just five man gank their five position support and then tap out, right? <laughs> yeah, but they're not cheating out. That's an open qualifier play right there. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Yeah. When you're like, hey, you know, it's a, uh, I'm gonna, I, God damn it, I'm gonna kill this guy. I don't care if I die for it. I don't care if I'm the most farmed hero on my team. I'm gonna kill this witch doctor. But I respect it, you know? I would do the same thing in that position. Honestly, that, he was really the only person they could have killed, so. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but he didn't have to go for the kill. Static Storm? Okay, get that puck. No! No, don't tell me he's gonna live. Oh my god. They can't get the glimpse on him. Feels bad. Spearbreaker's coming in hot and then going out cold. Alright, so let's reevaluate. What what would Braveheart like to do? I'm not talking about game winning stuff. I'm like, what's your objective now? Is it like, let's get a. Do any of these healers have killing sprees? Uh, yes, Puck definitely has a killing spree. I think the game now is kill Puck. That is a tough order, dude. He's got a. Is, he's that's, got. That's what you gotta. You gotta set goals for yourself. Plus 16 armor, right? So he's tanky as hell for a Puck. He's got phase blink. Do they have magic dance? I don't know. Dude. No. They've got a Dagon TA. That cannot kill a Witch Doctor. <laughs> dude, I love this. Wait. Braveheart just went from a team that I was just like, meh, to a team that I'm like, dude, you guys got heart. You got Braveheart. Here's the thing, if you go Dagon TA, what are they still playing for, right? I thought they were I'm still you, trying. Kill the puck. Did, did I not just say magic damage? I, okay. And you were like, do they have magic damage? And then boom, Dagon TA. I told I mean, you, that's the game. Dude, Lanham, Lanham, like, he knows he's won the, the main game, right? So he's playing the sub game with them. He's got a mech. He's like, you know you know what? I'm, I know you guys are trying to kill us. Max Voodoo, got a mech. I'm ready. Look, they're closing in on him, but he's baiting. He yeah, knows. He knows. Okay. 180 abated, no problem. Oh, mech on cooldown? Oh, he might actually die here. Oh, no. Yeah. Damn it. Okay, now you gotta kill the wood. Uh, oh. <laughs> Good moves. In and out. Kill Ori? Yes! <gasps> oh, yeah, they got him! Yes! Alright, here comes the Wukong command, but it's kind of an awkward spot. That tombstone is actually doing a ton of work. 
And yeah, they're, they're actually team wiping them. Alright. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. You know, well, if if Braveheart team wiped them, do you think they would call it GG? No. It, it might be like the first time in Dota history you team wiped up and you called you. That's true, actually. I would like to see the statistics on that. I don't think that has. But like, why would you ever do that? <laughs> no, you would never do that. But at the same time, why would you ever build Dagon TA? It's so that you can kill a puck. And they did kill you know a lot what, of Braveheart? I respect. I respect Braveheart a lot. That was. It took Moxie. You know, they showed up to their minor qualifier, they went 0-2, but damn it all if they didn't make it look interesting. I think they played... Shout us out to Braveheart. Yeah, they played a really good series of game in the upper bracket, but then the, the gas ran out. It was too expensive. So yeah, they couldn't it was some premium unleaded stuff. Alright guys, that is going to be it for today's, or not today's, but the set one. Because the game's finished so fast, we're going to have to wait two hours for the next game. So, I'm actually even going to end the stream, and then I'll pump the stream back up in like about an hour and 40 minutes or something like that. So, thank you for tuning in. You can check out my co-caster, at Tsunami643. Why don't you leave us with a nugget of wisdom before we end the stream? Uh, a wise man once said, you know, sometimes you, you gotta give it your all. And, and Braveheart did that. I, I hope... I hope they don't disband. I hope, I hope we see them at TI. You know, I hope that they're gonna get a lot of points this season, and they will bring TA Dagon into the meta.